Hi guys, this episode of Red Wolf TV, we have a special guest over here, Christoph from Novrich, and here just to go and just ask a few questions about how things are going and how they've been. So yeah, the last time I met Christoph was around 2016 when you first visited Hong Kong. You were like a wildly successful YouTuber. I was some dude attending a CQB game that was overcrowded. See, now you're and, also a famous, yeah. famous YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> and then now, like, what is what has it been like going from like you know going from YouTube to being the owner of your own company? I think it's a less relaxed life, I'd say, <laughs> like more worries. <laughs> that's mm. for sure. Because if you if you let's say just do YouTube, you know you you're. All you do is making videos, right? You have one goal, make content, make content, yeah, fly around, visit all these fields, and, and it's very... You know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. When you run a business, there's so many problems. There's like legal, there's taxes, there's all of these things you don't even want to do, right? Mm -hmm. You just want to make cool guns, but yeah. you have to do all this other crap as well. Mm -hmm. So I do miss the simplicity of of just running an YouTube channel. Mm, yeah, that, that sounds pretty legitimate, yeah. <laughs> Kevin was starting a business, man. I'm telling you, it sounds fun at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's mine, man. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm mm. enjoying the process. Yeah, that's great. Uh, okay, so I have the next question. Uh, so, we all recently, obviously, went through a uh, COVID phase. How did COVID affect your uh, business in general? Massively, actually. Because the way we do guns is we, you know, me and the engineers that are hired, we fly over to Asia, we visit factories and we kind of see, you know, who is capable of um, manufacturing at the quality level that we need. And most of the time we can't find anyone, so we kind of have to spend time in the factory to really teach them and show how to do stuff. Now we couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to hire people in, in the East, basically, in Asia. and So local staff for you. Exactly. Local, uh, we, we now employ, I think, 15 people okay. yeah, in Asia. And, you know, then, t first of all, we had to bring these people to the level where we kind of are, where the engineering team in Austria is. So same understanding on exactly, like mechanics yeah. and also like and, the hobby and stuff. And that's not easy because these people, very often if they're engineers, they don't play as of themselves. It's very hard to find a good engineer and an airsoft player, right? It's almost yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah. So you have to teach them the airsoft aspect of things. Yeah, like, you know, simple things that seem simple to us, like grip angle, explain it to someone who never held a gun in his hand, right? Ah. So that was a massive, massive, massive challenge. Now actually COVID is kind of over. Ish, yeah, and we can go to Asia again, which is now why I'm here, yeah. So we can really go to the factories again and make sure the stuff is done right ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so basically manufacturing side and also even hiring poses a lot of uh, challenge for you doing as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, gotcha. Well, I mean, like Norwich now has you know bolt action sniper rifles from your SSG24, now has AEGs, mm -hmm. it's got GBBs. Um, and see what's left. I mean, what do you think about, say, like HPA? You know, is there a position for that? Are you going to make something for it? You know, we already have HPA products. Actually, uh, we released our own regulator, which I think is right now one of the most affordable ones in the industry. We make an HPA adapter for Glock. Mm -hmm. So we do like the the adapter, we, right? We yeah. don't make a specific HPA gun, and I also don't want to go too far into HPA because I I kind of want to make airsoft more accessible and, and you know is e easier to, to to do this hobby basically but i feel like with hpa you add all these hurdles on top you know now you need a compressor now you need like a tank at home it's more expensive and i believe if if the whole industry focuses on you know this very like high-end super expensive hpa products it might not grow the spot there hmm. so we do some stuff yeah because we know people want to use our pistols on hpa so we do support them in this but we're not gonna go too deep down the HP route. Mm -hmm. But I do like it personally. I mean, you know, if you if you have the budget and, and you are in TS for a long time, HP is a great option, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. A bit heavy, but it's robust mm -hmm. system-wise. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, then uh, now you've been obviously not just only an influencer, but also as a business owner now. Mm -hmm. Now, throughout all these years, what are your some of your favorite airsoft moments? My favorite airsoft moment. Does it also come to being in a factory and seeing thousands of guns being assembled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just an uh, influencer side. Uh, actually, you can say you can mention both. So, when yeah. you were before you're a business owner, you were more like a YouTube influencer. What are favorite moments? And then now, as a business owner, are there yeah. new favorite moments? 
I think as a business owner, the, the most favorite moments is when you 3D design and prototype for, I don't know, six, seven, eight months. Yeah. And then you have something in your hand that you can actually, let's say it's a gas pistol, you can wreck it and it actually shoots like, oh my god. Oh my god, it's actually working. Uh, this whole concept that we thought about, it actually works out. Like on SP5, we had that. We're like, oh my god, it's, it's working, it's, it's light, it's, it's decent. Uh, um, and then the next step when this gets mass produced and for, for QC we, we fly to factories if we can, if COVID doesn't restrict that. Mm. And just, you know, seeing these guns on racks, like thousands of them and going through it and seeing this machinery manufacturing at this scale is just, it just feels really good. It's, yeah, it's I, nice to see it. I totally understand because uh, mm. I'm also the uh, project manager on mm. RWA line and I totally get what you mean because yeah. uh, when we develop a pistol from conceptualize things and mm. you're like oh i wonder if it's even possible yeah and then after back and forth with the engineers and mm. then finally we see the thing that you imagine materialize yeah. it's a very successful it's feeling. absolutely beautiful though. um when it comes to the most beautiful moments in as an as of player i, I think it's these I mean, we all know these moments, right? You, you kind of like hide in a bush and you, and you hear a voice and then all of a sudden there's like multiple people walking past you and they haven't seen you. Like that feeling is just, it's Stealthy. just unbelievable. It's, mm. it's really nice. It gets the adrenaline going like nothing else, I feel like. Ah, yeah. nice. All right, so now that, you know, you've got the SSP5, you know, mm -hmm. it's very speed soft focus, it's very fast. Do you think speed softing is still gaining popularity and will it sort of dominate the industry? <laughs> it's a really, it's a really tricky question actually. Mm -hmm. Now, I have two, I have kind of two views on this and I'm very split myself with my mm -hmm. opinions on speed soft because on the one hand, I feel like this sport needs a competitive aspect, right? Yeah. It's, it makes a sport, a sport basically, and even myself, I like the idea of, you know, going somewhere with a very minimalistic kit, playing for an hour, being completely exhausted, completely done, and kind of treating it almost as a, you know, like going to the gym kind of thing. Yeah. I go there, I play for an hour, I'm, I'm done, and I go back home. Yeah, instead of driving two hours to an outdoor field, play for eight hours, come back, and the whole day yeah, is kind of... Yeah. It was a great experience, um, but it still takes you an entire day, and you need to find that time. Yeah. So that's the one aspect that I like about Speedsoft. But I have talked to people in the paintball industry and it's very hard to hear what they think about it. Yeah? Because paintball started in, in the woodland, uh, it was kind of like mm -hmm. woodball, and then they really tried to transform it, at, like the whole industry was on board. This needs to become a sport and they want to broadcast on television, right? They really pursued this goal and the whole industry was holding together, making um, paintball, you know, going away from guns, going away from camouflage, not making it look like military going into the competitive aspect and really making um, a sport out of it. Yeah. Well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when you look at paintball now, and you can see this when you go at Google Trends, paintball was like 20 years ago, 10 times bigger than airsoft, right? Yeah. And now you look at it and when, when they started, when they started doing this, they, it almost seems like it killed the sport. Yeah. It really went down and actually airsoft is now on Google Trends more popular than paintball. Mm -hmm. So while I really like Speedsoft, I'm kind of, maybe, maybe things have changed there, yeah? but when I look at that trend of competitive paintball, kind of taking down paintball, mm, you're worried that will make I'm, I'm worried about that, because also right now in Airsoft I can, I can go to, I don't know, some random, let's say 18 year old dude, and I can give him an Airsoft gun, I can send him to a woodland field, and I'm telling you, he will, he will probably, even though he's completely new to the squad, he will have one or two kills yeah, in that mm -hmm. day, and he will have fun. And he's still running around, stalking, and gets like this cool feeling of uh, being a weekend warrior. In Speedsoft, you send someone in, he gets fucking destroyed. Like, he's gonna have red dots all over his body. It's such a competitive environment. I've played with Umbrella before, it really hurt. <laughs> it just, you know, it, it, it hurts. You really need to be. And this is fine if you're in Airsoft for a long time. Yes. But I'm man, just... like, <laughs> imagine taking your girlfriend and putting her into a Speedsoft game. It's gonna be like. I will never play this again. This was not fun, right? Yeah. Yes. So, I think there's a place for, for SpeedQB, but I would be very careful with SpeedQB replacing Airsoft how it is right now. I think it's something additional to it and a very... You know, it's kind of like how I, Airsoft IPC, Action Air, is not taking away the skirmishing. It's an additional section of Airsoft. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. SpeedQB should stay there. It's an addition to Airsoft instead of a replacement. Was yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, fun fact uh, that Christoph mentioned about uh, bringing your girlfriend to games—that is why Japan has more girls playing airsoft. 
it's because one jewel also. yeah they also have one jewel so they have less likely to leave a scar on you mm-hmm. and second of all they actually are more of a cosplay aspect but less on the competitive side mm-hmm. yeah. so that's why they don't even play a speed soft style they more than just to socialize and have fun Man, yeah. I've, I've played in the Japanese field, I couldn't believe my eyes what I'm seeing. I, I was seeing a guy in a CQP area with a dragon off, mm. a Russian helmet, and he was wearing, you know, these shovels that you can fold? <laughs> and like, all, like, in a CQP field, yeah? Yes. And he was the only <laughs> one like this. It's just, you know, while, while on the other side you see paintball players with, with high cappers and, and an AR-15 yeah. mid-cap in the, in the US, like, destroying each other and like yelling at each other and being angry. And then you go to Japan and there's like this so girl in a skirt, it's like a springer <laughs> pistol. Having fun in, 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 it's such a different environment. Yeah. Very it's different. almost not the same sport anymore. I'm not sure everyone knows, but uh, a lot of us do know that you served in the military before. Mm-hmm. Now, through that, did you manage to convince any of your real steel shooting friends or any of the military friends into playing airsoft? Actually, I didn't. Also, I don't have a re- well. You would be surprised, but I'm actually not into real steel. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not a... When, when here's a, a real firearm and here's an airsoft gun, man, I pick the airsoft gun any time over the real gun. I, I just, you know, this thing I can I can wave around, it's not that dangerous. I I can shoot in, in the living room, I can shoot in the backyard, I can hand it to a friend. It's stressful. You, exactly. You I feel like it's... I can have <laughs> so much fun with this thing and I don't have to drive to a range where I need a license and I cannot bring 10 of my friends who have no idea about guns, right? I can... Just let them try it. So, I'm always for the airsoft gun. Yeah? Not saying I'm, I'm against firearms, yeah, not at all, but I would always pick the airsoft gun over the firearm. So I, I, didn't, I didn't develop a friendship circle around firearms, right? Because oh. it's just not a hobby of mine. Mm. Gotcha. Um, when it comes to military guys, I did actually bring some of them to an airsoft game. Mm. And <laughs> well, it's, it's actually ridiculous because you, you learn stuff at the military and you go to an airsoft game and you get destroyed, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Like the, 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 the it's kind of like... Year olds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you learn martial arts against a tree kind of thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you try to do it on a human and the human just destroys it. It's kind of like that, right? They, they realized after six months of, of CQP training, they, you know, there's like... They go like, okay, this guy on this corner, this guy on this corner. And then a guy with a die mask and a guy comes like, <laughs> boom, 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 runs through the door and kills all three of them, right? And they're just, what? Like, that's what we... What? It doesn't work? Owned by Steve Software, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was, that was very... Devastating. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably very discouraging too. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. did I learn all this from nothing? Or? So, so yeah. What if this is real? teach me from yeah. nothing. <laughs> what if this is real? I yeah. died. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to a 12 year old. Yeah. 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 I understand that. All right, so obviously in your videos, you move around a lot. Mm. You move fast, you go through all the bushes and things like that. I'm sure many of our viewers will want to know is like, do you work out? What's your exercise? When I, it comes don't. To you don't. I don't. I don't. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a very active person. Like, I like hiking, I like bouldering, swimming, running. I just mm. like to do all these kind of things. Yeah. I also I, honest, I also do a little bit of parkour. Yeah. I try to not do too much because then I'm going to break my spine or something. Oh, yeah. But I'm really good at when it comes to climbing stuff, jumping over stuff, mm. swinging on poles and all of that kind of stuff. Oh. So that does help me to move efficiently through a field. Oh. Mm. I don't know, first time to do parkour. Parkour, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is an interesting one. Um, you obviously develop your own airsoft products. You have your own guns and whatnot. But I also noticed that you guys have started developing your own gear, your own line of gear. Yes, exactly. You have developed your own BDU, play carriers, now even your own camo pattern. Now, can you tell us a little bit the story behind why you developed that and uh, what inspired? And then uh, how is that doing now? I, I can tell you that. Um, so we made the SG24, right? Mm-hmm. And there was no pouch for the SG24 magazine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like, man, let's not make our own pouch. Let's just kind of find the pouch. Yeah? Let's, and we found a fly pouch. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And we bought it and we sold it. But it's kind of, you know, it's like with Velcro, it's loud. And I, it wasn't laser cut. It didn't look modern. And at this point, I was, hey, we kind of have to, you know, we, we sell like this cool gun, but there's no cool pouch for it. Let's try to make a pouch. And that was. You know, I'm not a tailor, not at all. I have no experience with textile whatsoever. I literally, I, I, I made a pouch from paper, you know, I folded it, I, I want it kind of like this, and I, I went to a manufacturer and said, hey, I want to make a pouch. <laughs> I, you know, look, look kind of like this, this magazine has to fit inside. Okay. And we started that, and then the result of this paper craft pouch was actually kind of decent, you know, I was like, man, it's not that hard to make gear. Mm-hmm. Um, but then 
you know, if you want to make a play carry, now things are different. You know, you cannot make it from paper anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and also that folded. exactly. So I I saw you know we have all these products and we kind of need the carrying systems for it and all that. I, I need someone who need who knows about textile stuff. So I found Doug. Uh, he has a design education, um, tail education, and also he was in the military and is an airsoft player. So I really found like these personalities in one person. A perfect, <laughs> turn, perfect, perfect uh, candidate. Perfect <laughs> one guy, right? And he kind of built the whole textile department, which is now you know a play carrier's battle belt. All the pouches, um, also the camo pad, because you see he's super into camo patterns. Oh. He really wanted to do the cross of the camo pattern. And yeah, we supported him, just, which is why we now have an entire gear lineup. Actually, can you pronounce again your camo pattern properly? Quite spotter. It's, a, it's the name of a, of an Austrian snake. Okay, Kreuz Otter. Alright, good luck pronouncing that. <laughs> well, so now, um, you know, recently you've just unveiled, well, you've just released the SSP2, right, which is like a high cap base, you know. What were the sort of inspirations for it and, you know, what were the design behind it? The thing is that the SSP5 has a decent price tag, like it's, a, it's quite a hefty price tag. Mm-hmm. And that's because the entire upper receiver is, is machined. Uh, so when you know when you buy an aftermarket slide for like 150 USD or like 100 USD, why is it expensive? It's CNC machined. Uh, mm-hmm. And you find that same manufacturing technology on the SSP5. People liked it, but some of them said, you know, if- Out of the if, budget. Yeah, maybe out of the budget, yeah. So we wanted to make something that comes with a very similar feature set, like, you know, the, the holes in the frame for the universal holster, TDC, fixed barrel, lightweight slide, like with a, a Aluminium blowback housing in that and all the, all the kind of stuff all went into the SSP2, but there's no CNC in it. Uh, it's all it's alum, it's not zinc diecast. It's aluminium diecast, so it's still lightweight, not as sturdy. Like you know, if, if you will shoot an SSP5 and an SSP2, forever the SSP2 will break faster than an SSP5. Mm-hmm. But you still get uh, a very decent gun, especially for the person. Interesting. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so now Norbert's no longer just a YouTube channel, it's now actually a brand. As a business owner, what are some of the biggest challenges you've come across? Times it needs, I mean you probably know that. The time from the idea to the product on the shelf is just such a grind. Yeah. Like yeah, you already, you, you know, you already have a prototype, it's like, oh my god, like this is already, you see, it, it, I've already used it in the field, it works, right? Yeah. How long can it still take to make this? And then it takes like a year or even longer to bring that into a mass production. And onto the show. Have you come across this problem? So you've come up with a mold and you're like, okay, this works. And then while ma- mass producing, the mold deformed and then you have to make another one. Yes, especially if you go into high quantities. Like yes. molds, you won't believe it, but molds have a lifetime. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yes. this mold can only do 150,000 pieces and then it's broken. Yep, exactly. And you can run into, you know, if, if that's like a magazine mold mm-hmm. and you know, every magazine has multiple of this part, yeah. you actually run into these issues. Yeah, molds, molds break. You have to do tooling again. Ah, so basically, manufacturing challenges is yes. mostly the thing. No, you... communication with the supplier, that's ah. a big one. Quality control, that's mandatory. Logistics with COVID. Yeah. Well. I don't have to tell you, right? You know all these things. <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah. are you? <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> like, I, 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 share, <laughs> very I share the agony, the you know, same thing as yeah. you, but like, they yeah, we still in the same boat, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. We struggle with the same issues. Yeah. So please be lenient on us. You know, yeah. we do try to make good parts for you guys. It's just tough at times. All right, so here's a, here's a big one. As an influencer and a business owner, what keeps you up at night? I think exactly that. The time to the market. It's, you know, someone's like, oh my God, there's like all these salaries and all these like tooling and I have to pay for all of this and I have to wait for two years to get that back and you have to manage the cash flow of the company. And it's, it's almost a nightmare sometimes. You know, really think, oh my God, it's since two years already, we had to pay all these salaries, the product is not on the market yet. Mm-hmm. Is, this go- is this company gonna survive even? So you have to run the numbers the whole time. And that's, that can be really hard. And what's even harder is if you mass produce the product, then you can see at factory and you find the problem. And that's just, oh my God, like a couple thousand guns on the shelves and you know you have to take them apart and change the part. It's just, mm-hmm. God damn it. That's, that's what keeps me up. Oh, wow. we, we, we call them reworks. Oh it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the yeah. curse word really in the company. Yes. <laughs> when, <laughs> whenever you hear the word we work, you know yeah. that it's not going to be good news. Yeah. No, never going to be good news. Yeah. Okay, so last question is, what can we expect from Norwich, the company and the brand, in the coming future? Well, the thing is that I would say seventy percent of the products 
of the gun products that you see at Novus.com, they were they were still started by me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm I think I'm a decent tech, but I'm I'm by no means a top level as of tech. Yeah, I'm just not. That's that's just the reality of things. Um, but I hired multiple engineers. You know, I think we now just for the gun gun designing with 20 people, and these people, every single one is far better than I ever was and will ever be. Yeah. So, and, and you see, like the SSP5 was one of the first products that wasn't a design of mine, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see that, like that, that product, I, I could never build such a product, yeah. And all the products that are coming out are now this, are on this level, right? It's like innovative, really standing out in the market and just well performing. And at a bigger scale, because I was one person, right? I can only do so much. Now you scale this up to 20 and you run parallel and you really push out those products. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna see a lot more new innovations that is exactly, gonna yeah. change their More innovative than they were in the beginning and at a much larger scale. Not just in quantities, but also in how many projects we run and push parallel. Wow. Wow. Can't wait. <laughs> cool stuff coming, yeah. tell you guys. <laughs> Get excited. We make some cool stuff. Definitely. Uh. Wow. Anyway, wow, thank you so much for like answering these questions and all that. It's an absolute joy to see you back, you know, in Asia, touring around in general. So yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you so much, Christoph. Well, thank yeah. you as well. It's good to Thanks see you again. Me. Come visit us again soon. Yeah, anytime. All right, thank you all for going watching, you know, check us out at www.redwolfairsoft.com and obviously check out Norwich as well. I'm sure you all know him. And thanks so much for tuning in. See ya. Gotcha. <laughs>